Hi, welcome to the Coffee Chat Show here on Buzzing Patea, the show where we talk about things that are happening right here, right now, as well as general news, tips, information, and advice. Now, guys, welcome back to part two. Joining me is TJ. How you doing, my again. man? Yeah, sound. Yeah, look, you're looking pretty dapper there, son. <laughs> I try, I try. He's been out there with the wax, and you're doing all the old <laughs> tweaks <laughs> around. Honestly, you got to watch him, I'll tell you. He's the vainest boxing bare knuckle guy I've ever met in my Far life. Far too pretty to be a bare knuckle boxer. <laughs> well, in part one, if you missed part one, check out in the description below, there's a link there where TJ explains about all his life back in Plymouth, what it was like as a young lad coming over to Thailand, not only for a holiday with his mates, but he's been living here now for 10 years. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, you know, check it out because you know we're level now aren't we mate yeah, hey, yeah. hey, there's no good looking bad looking Even that, that's all gone now that's all gone even with your six pack it's all gone <laughs> hey, they like my little round pack my round packs does me all right um, one, one pack one pack. give me one pack <laughs> now all jokes aside what i want to do in this in this part of our interview is i want to just talk to you because there is a serious side to you, you know, i know you're a great laugh you're a good lad to go out and have a few beers with you enjoy the parties etc etc but now you're a much more focused, much more dedicated guy. <coughs> in terms of the changes, let's talk about your boxing. What made you decide to think to yourself, do you know what, I'm gonna have a go at boxing here? Box, uh, back in the day? Yeah. So I started boxing when I was 14 or 15, and I was getting in trouble back home, and I was a bit of a, I, was, I know it's hard to believe, but I was, <laughs> I was a little shit growing up. So I started boxing, actually I started boxing originally for the fitness for football. Oh, okay. Um, and I thought, oh, this is amazing. I'm yeah, getting yeah. punched in the face. I'm <laughs> not getting arrested for it. This is amazing. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So I stuck at it for a bit um, and then joined the Navy, boxing the Royal Navy for, for God knows how many years. Um, that was cool. You know, yeah. I, and I still played football and box. It was like both. I was not really passionate about boxing. Um, and then when I came back out and I moved to Newquay, mm -hmm. down in Cornwall, I uh, had my first official amateur fight. Yeah. Um, and knocked, knocked the guy out in the second round, which was amazing. So uh, I was like, oh, this is absolutely brilliant. Do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. I, I'm, I'm normally getting arrested or yeah. getting in trouble for, for fighting and stuff. So I stuck at it, um, ploughed through for God knows how many years, then moved to Thailand about three years after that. Yeah. Didn't box for probably the first two maybe even three or four years it was a long time probably break just enjoying thailand you know what he i mean didn't have a break he was busy doing yeah that. I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm the beers on the beers for sure too hungover you know what i mean and then in bangkok and um, which i used to live in um five six years ago i started training again mm. i was like, oh and it rekindled that yeah love. Like, oh that love and i was like yeah. passion but still i was still juggling being a party wreckhead party boy and, and a fighter trying to juggle both I train hard through the week and yeah. I party harder at the weekend yeah. you know um, I had plenty of amateur fights over here um, never had any any plans to go pro um, and then it was only when I turned pro for boxing four years ago mm. yeah I was 30 so, so yeah. that's a very late age to turn yeah, pro yeah. and the reason I turned pro is because um, shout out to my friend Scott Patrick O'Farrow in, in Singapore uh, I was boxing under their show for they did like a corporate boxing yeah. event. So you had a world title fight, professionals, and then the first preliminaries were like um, corporate boxers. Oh, okay. To try and raise them, I don't know what it's for, but so I flew down from Thailand to there to box. Amazing, loved it. And they did another event six months later, and they couldn't match me because I was I was not amateur level right, anymore. Yeah. And he goes, hey, what? Um, I can't find anyone to box here. Be unfair. Why don't you turn pro? And I fought a guy who had had four fights and was undefeated. Oh, okay. So I was like, oh, well, I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, anyway, I smashed him. Um, yeah, did really well. He's composed. It was like John Nutt, as you, you know, John yes, Nutt. Yes, um, yeah. He actually announced me, um, which is pretty cool, man. And it was just the best. 8,000 people. I'm used to like 200 people. It's yeah. amazing, amazing. Oh, fair play. And that was, oh, it's amazing. But I was still, I'll be honest, like, um, it's no secret. I love a good party. I was still training hard and partying just as hard. Brilliant. I wouldn't miss training, I would always train, but I would party for two or three days at the weekend, which was, wasn't yeah. good. And as we were talking about earlier on today, um, any fight I've ever lost, any fight, professional or amateur, is because I was partying the weekend before. It was, it was too, much, too much of that, that's what it was. But you it know, was, you, yeah. you've now changed completely, haven't you? Because I mean, Let's be honest, I've known you a long time. It <laughs> yeah. won't be the first time I've stumbled into you in, no, in no, one of the bars. That's it, that's it. It be the last <laughs> you probably can't remember them, but no, there you go. It. But I mean, now all jokes aside, you are very dedicated, aren't you? And you're not only dedicated in terms of like your boxing, but you've changed the genre now. Now you're into yeah, bare knuckles. Bare knuckle, that's it. And, and the reason for that transition, this might sound a bit crazy, but if you look at my hands, mm, I, must have scarred, had, yeah. I must have had 200 plus street fights <laughs> yeah, growing up. Yeah. So I've been doing bare knuckle yeah. all my life, technically. Yeah. 
Um, and this may sound a bit crazy, and I'm sure the guys listening will, will, uh, will understand, but I'm more comfortable without gloves on. Mm. It feels it's more natural to me. Yeah. I was never the best boxer. I started quite late. I turned pro late. Mm. So boxing, I, I'm, I love a good scrap, but I wasn't technically the best boxer. Mm. And then last year, last uh, last February, I don't know if you remember, up in Bangkok, I fought for the Thai National Championship That's belt. That's right, yeah. Um, I was there, yeah. Really was there. prestigious yeah. belt, lovely belt and stuff. Eight rounds, um, first six rounds just dominated, smashed him. Mm. I think I was sober for about two months, which was good. So, um, yeah, smashed him. Round seven, me being me, dropped my hand, do, yeah. do my usual sort of cocky stuff. And he caught me with a one, two. Didn't mm. hurt, didn't even rock me. And the ref ran in and waved it off. Mm. Yeah. Because yeah. now I found that after that Thai guy, a very good boxer, he's a young kid, but he's um, he's going to the Olympics. Mm. So for him to lose that oh, yeah, to a Westerner, that wasn't good, yeah. and you know Thailand's good. like yeah, very yeah. corrupt, but it's fine. And I was like, and obviously you know about like Anthony Joshua and Tyson Fury, they should have fought years ago. Yeah. And they haven't because I believe that glove boxing, especially now with like Jake Paul fighting. Mm. Um, Mayweather. That's just ridiculous. It's, 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 it takes a mockery out of the sport. It's all money, and yeah. especially for the guys that train their ass off. And, yeah. and, and these guys are making 100 million, 10 dollars. You know? <laughs> oh yeah. And it's mad. I mean, like it's you crazy. said with that Jake Paul. I mean, that was just an insult to the sport. I think literally, that done such literally. a damage to the sport because he's not a boxer. He's fighting not just <laughs> another box. He's fighting one of the most iconic just fighters exactly, in the world. Exactly. And that, probably yeah. for another hundred years to come, he will still be one of the most yeah. iconic fighters. And yet he gets in as a go. It's like, how and, does that and, work? And, and, you know? Not not just as a go. He earns like a hundred million dollars. Oh million man, yeah. I mean, in terms <laughs> of boxing, I mean, I, I've seen your, I've seen a pretty much. I think I've seen all your fights. I think yeah. apart from one. Talk to me about Naz. Come on, you two are brilliant. Naz I love are, these two are brilliant. Naz these two are Morris. brilliant. So um, back when I when I was still amateur. I was smashing everyone, but like, I was just plowing through them. Just it was just it wasn't e- easy, but yeah. it was. I was just it was always like um, quite big events, like in nightclubs, yeah. you yeah. know. But I was yeah. still amateur. Yeah. But I always fought, even when I was amateur. I never fought with the head guard on. Yeah. I've always fought. So I, I was doing five rounds, which is more than a pro anyway. Yeah. Pro was four rounds, yeah, right? Four and yeah. Your first couple of rounds, the first couple of fights. So I was always fighting at a pro level, 10, 15 fights, remember was. Anyway, I was 9-0, and yeah. 9-0 and in Thailand, 9-0 and in Thailand. Uh, fight, fighting, no head guard, 10-ounce gloves, and they're still amateur. And uh, Nazar Morris, uh, as we know, very good yeah, friend of mine now. great lad. Uh, he was about 6, 7 kg, maybe more heavy than me. Mm. And me being the arrogant, I said, ah, oh, it doesn't matter, I'll smack, yeah. it doesn't matter how big you are, I'll knock you out. <laughs> So I, I, I'm quite, quite, uh, quite vicious on social media, as you know. He's brutal. Oh, oh, you're brutal. Banned and, you're banned brutal. Banned <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so yeah, so, so I went back and forth, and we fought, and uh, I came out and uh, I socked him with a big one-two, uh, my trademark under there, bum bum, and then he just kept on coming forward. And I was like, oh, <laughs> stretch man. That don't normally happen. <laughs> yeah. So, so, so then we were going at it, and then the end of the first round, last ten seconds, it was. He caught me with the right to like, sort of here, the side of the head, temple. Mm. And my legs went. Yeah. And then, yeah. The, and then the bell went. I was kind of like, oh, I'm not used to this. What's going on? There's a reason there's weight classification yeah, yeah. in boxing. Oh, isn't? God. And he was, I don't know if you remember, he was jacked. Yeah. He was big then. Uh, I'm five foot ten. He's about six foot plus. And he was, he was, he, yeah, was, he looked, big he, old he, looked boy. he looked about 20. Yeah. So. And then just round two was uh, again I, I never listen to my coaches I do now but I didn't yeah. uh, why well, tell me what to do game plan but so I'll knock him out he can hit me but I'll knock him out Se- came out second round was actually really like, explosive they both mm. just, just trying to knock each other out round three but halfway through me doing my usual drop my hands or come in to fucking hit him sorry and as I've hit him he's caught me at the same time <laughs> yeah. and there's actually a picture and we caught the arc both, both in the yeah. exact same punch I think I took that picture I think you did, <laughs> I think you did, I did. Yeah, I think it was me. and he knocked me out yeah, cold yeah, I remember it and then I, I, I've done what happened I think Liam picked me up out of on, uh, on Liam's legs do you remember do you know what I remember most about oh. that was when and you're absolutely right you two connected pretty much at split second Literally timing same time, yeah. and the worst of it for me was being your friend as well I didn't really know Naz that well but being your friend I looked across and you were, you were grabbing for your gum shield you weren't really with where we were and yeah, you were yeah. stumbling for your gums you and I looked at you and I just thought flipping hell mate you know yeah, like as a mate you know knowing that you can handle <clears> yourself <throat> and that I thought oh man you know you've like you say you like that showboat in the air go on and do it and then you bang it away yeah, on that you it, shouldn't it, have done that it, like. it, it was crazy and you know what that, that was the first wait excuse the uh, the pun but the first wake up call because mm. I remember coming round and looking up to Liam because he had me in his arms yeah. <laughs> like a married couple <laughs> yeah, yeah. and I was like oh, I was like, win. I, I said, I said 
has the ref stopped it? And uh, I've been unconscious for about two months, uh, two, about two minutes. Yeah. So thinking it was like I was still in the eight count or nine count. And, uh, but you he, sold the score, didn't you? I did. So you we had a, re- we had a rematch um, about three months later. And I said, right, I'm not going to drink. I'm going to, I said, I've drunk a couple of times, but <laughs> I'm, I'm going to train properly. And this time I had a game plan mm. and I knew how to box him. I knew, I knew, and he had that horrible right hand. So everything I was doing, it was like the uh, amateur ABA kind of style. Yeah. Oh, and in out, just yeah, in yeah. out, point yeah. score. Yeah. And in the second round or third round maybe, my, my trademark switch stance where I'm like this and I jump, switch, and then come over her. Yeah. And I dropped him. Yeah. It wasn't, it wasn't a knockout punch, but he went down. Mm. So I knew that if I, as long as it knocked out now, I was going to win. So yeah. I just ran away for two, just sort of yeah. two rows of jab in, just, just trying to stay away. It was a win, mate. And I got the win. Yeah. And, and that was so, that, that win was better than any of the win I had because. But I think the thing I like about that win was that made you mentally box rather yeah, than try and exactly. physically box you. 100%. When you got in the ring, you were very physical. Look at me, I can do what I can do. And, and that has never hurt you until that day when you lost to Naz. Whereas the second time, what was really noticeably yeah. different was mentally you were much more controlled. There yeah, was none of this showboating, none of this like trying to stick your job, go on, go on, go on. Because, you know. because you're getting long yeah, <laughs> I mean, let's talk about your fight now. I mean, we've gone through like your, your, your glove boxing. Now you're bare knuckle. Yep. I mean, what on earth? I mean, you know, <laughs> do you want to look like this? I mean, <laughs> come on, flipping hell, mate. What's going on? Why is everyone's reaction like it? It is crazy, but we used to touch on it earlier. I'm more comfortable after all the fights I've had growing up. Yeah. I'm more comfortable without gloves on. It's almost like, it sounds a bit crazy. I feel like someone thought, oh, um, TJ's quite good at boxing, but he's a good street fighter. Tell you what, let's make a new sport called bare knuckle boxing just for TJ. That's what I feel like. <laughs> right. I'm so comfortable, do you know what I mean? Um, yeah, so, so last, going back to uh, that title shot last, last year, I gave up boxing. I was I'm not boxing again. This mm. is bollocks, you know. I mean, it's too much drama and politics mm. and red tape and this and that. So I was like, I won that fight and mm. I got waved off and it was mm. everyone was booing. And I was like, so I was like, I'm not doing it again. And I officially or unofficially retired. Right? I was like, I'm not boxing again. It's all, it's all crap. And then um, December last year or November last year, I think it's I had four weeks notice. Uh, John, that as we know, um, offered me a bare knuckle fight, a bare knuckle debut. Mm. And I was like, yeah, do you know what? I fancy a bit of bare knuckle. Crack at that, yeah. Took it on four. I didn't train for the whole year since yeah. the February. <laughs> party, you know, I like party yeah. every week. <laughs> I got to November, I had four weeks, and I came down here with Chris, my trainer, and um, yeah, I was like, oh, man, I've got four weeks, I've got my bare knuckle debut. He's like, oh, for God's sake. I was like, don't take it. I was like, I can't. I've agreed yeah, now. Yeah, you can't back out. And, and, and back you know what? I'm like, yeah. if someone offers me a fight, I'm going to yeah, fight you. You're going to meet. Yeah. yeah, win or lose, I'm going to yeah, fight you. Yeah. And um, yeah, I boxed and, and I won. And I won, and I won well. Uh, it was very, very different. It was my first one, and I couldn't be the same. Mm. Um, I'm called Hellboy, my name's Hellboy because I like to be on the front foot. I'm always mm. pressing, I'm always closing mm. the gap. Whereas with, with the bare knuckle, you can't take a punch. Yeah. With, with gloves on, I just, the first round, I'd always let them punch me first. Mm. Just, just to see how just, it worked, yeah, just, power them out a bit. Because you know that first punch, it'd be the hardest punch they'll throw for yeah. the rest of that fight. Yeah. But you do that in bare knuckle, you go in sleep. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. so I was very, not nervous, what's the word, apprehensive. Mm. And I was boxing, and, and, and again, I boxed so well because I was, not scared. I was scared. Mm. I was scared of getting hit. Yeah, no, that makes sense. That so, makes sense. So I boxed very, very well and, and smooth and nice, and it was good. So, but I was still unfit, and I, if I fought him now, I'd, I'd destroy mm. him in the first round. But I think one of the things I want to just <coughs> say to people watching this that may not be quite au fait with the boxing issues. It, what I want to say, what TJ is saying there is, imagine getting hit with a pillow, and then imagine getting hit with a piece <laughs> of wood. And that's that's the difference between if you're boxing your gloves, you know, if you're getting hit with a pillow, if you take those gloves off, you are going to get hit with a bit of wood. And it really is that much difference. It really, really. And you know what? A lot of people are are perhaps not into the boxing or don't understand when, when you're taped up. That's like a block of concrete. You yeah, know? that's it. That's and so it. when you take that glove off, that pillow off, and you still got the same tape in there, it, it, you know, it ain't good. Well, you say that actually. So I, th- I thought originally that you have the, the same boxing mm. tape, you know, the, the thing, but it's not. You have your, your wrist taped and your hands free. Oh, okay. It's, it's literally bare. Oh, knuckle. I didn't know that. I it's didn't a, know that. So, oh, right. So uh, the wrist um, to stop you breaking your wrist. Then. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. That, that's still solid, yeah. and it stops about there. <laughs> it's just really oh, bare. wow. So it's Brilliant. actually bare knuckles. So it really is dangerous. I mean, a bit. How important has Venom been to you? Because you know, as as TJ, the guy that I know, the guy that I've seen for ten years. You know, we've had a great crack. We've been out some great evenings. Now I see the different TJ. Now I see the guy that's gone from being the showboating, look at me, I love myself, oh, I can do this. So now you're focused. You can see that in your training. What's been Venom's input to that? Um, 
I've always trained, not on my own, but I've trained at gyms. I've had trainers in Bangkok, I've had Dom, uh, one of the best coaches I've ever had. He's now in Morocco, but I've never had a proper solid fight camp. Mm. And, it, and as you see, it, yeah, the yeah. boys here at Venom, yeah, training a, lot, hard. A, a lot of them live here. Mm. So they wake up and they eat, sleep and breathe mm. boxing or, or fighting. A lot of the Muay Thai fighters, but train in the morning, rest at lunch, train in the afternoon and then something in the evening. So they train so hard. I've never had that. I've always yeah. trained hard, but I've always done it myself, mm. which isn't good. You can't push yourself, do you know what I mean? So I come here and I, and I first came here in November and I trained with Chris. Oh, it's amazing. And because bare knuckle is this new, <clears throat> it's a new martial art, it is. Sure. It's, it's brand new, right? Yeah. It, it is boxing, but you can also grab, you can also clinch oh, okay. with one hand okay. and, and dirty box. Can you? Oh, right? So wow, I've nice. never done that before. They can, School they, time. They, they, can School actually, time. they can actually grab your old and then do that if they want to. Really? So that happened. I fought in February, my second bare knuckle uh, against Fabiano Hawthorne, a good friend of mine now. Um, five rounds. And after I was so fit, I was really fit. I was so ready, fit as hell. Training with Chris and the boys here at Venom. And after the first round, I sat down. <sighs> Oh, it, it was in the midday sun, 40 degrees. Oh, was that the one in Phuket? Yeah, Phuket. Yeah, yeah, it was, yeah, it was, yeah. It was amazing. Boiling hot, wasn't it? Boiling hot. 40 degrees plus, it was crazy. But he was in the same heat. I can't use an excuse. But after the first round, he kept, because he's a Muay Thai fighter, I'm a boxer, mm. and it's, it's very different. Yeah, very, very. But they, they meet in the middle with, with bare knuckle. And he kept grabbing me a hold, and well, I'm trying to, I've never done grappling or, or Yeah, or it's pitching. a lot of energy. It's a lot of energy. So I, I sat down in the first round, and I was going, I was yeah. like, I'm done. I'm yeah. not, I did two minute rounds. Did round two, round three, round four, which I thought was the last round, right. round five. And then uh, last 30 seconds, Liam told my, my, my cornerman, 30 seconds. So I've gone out and I split his eye and I split it and I've really I've hammered him. And he's a tough guy. He's, he's a proper tough guy, Fabiano. And I've sat down, big smile on my face, going, I've won that, and I. And he went. Another one to go. And he went. Not yet. One well, more. I was like, oh, I forgot. It. And do you know what? It, it haunts me to this day. But I couldn't get back up. Yeah. I was slightly dizzy. Whether it was the sun or just the whatever. There's, there's no excuse. But I didn't get back up. And he won by default. Yeah. Fair play yeah. to him. A win's a win. But and that for me, which you said about me being serious now, that was the like. What are you doing, Teach? Mm. If you want to be a fighter, be a fighter. If you want to yeah. be a wreckhead. Yeah. Be a wreckhead or a party boy after you win. Mm, like, yeah. You can't juggle both. And I did that for years, you know, for 10, 15 years. So you go ahead. Next, you know, you're not just going to fight in, in Thailand now, are you? You're off to America. Off to America. Big challenge. Yeah, so um, obviously BK, you've got BKB in the UK, uh, which is bare knuckle boxing. And you've got BKFC in the States, which is bare knuckle fighting championship. Okay. Which is basically the bare knuckle of UFC. Okay. And it's growing so fast. It's crazy. It's Brilliant. just it's shooting through the roof. And I follow loads of the fighters there now. I'm in contact through Instagram and social media. I'm doing podcasts and stuff. And it's cool, man. It's really cool. And I was knocking on the door since that fight in February because that, that was under the BKFC brand. Okay. So I was, I, they, they were all watching. So I was in the... And maybe because I gave up, I didn't get the didn't get the yeah, green light. Yeah. I've been knocking on the door, been reaching out to people, and trying to trying to get in in, in, in the doorway. Um, and then finally, uh, two months ago, I got signed by Goat Combat Agency, okay, um, which are a bare knuckle management company uh, who work with BKFC. So I was signed by them. They handle all your sponsorships. They get you interviews, this, that, and they look after you. I've always done it myself. Yeah, me, right, yeah. So yeah. I've got that now. And then um, last month, I was speaking to the guys from there, saying, also, I'm training for a fight here. Am I getting matched? This was June, sorry. July event, no. August event, no. And then uh, a couple of weeks ago, we were talking, and he said, look, um, they're not gonna pay for your flight, because <laughs> I said to you before, I'm a nobody. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I, I, just coming up. I, yeah. In Thailand and Patty, people know me, but I, I'm a nobody, right? And BKFC has got people like Chad Mendes, mm. Paige Van Zandt, oh, yeah. um, Diego that Sanchez, X yeah. um, Chris Lieben, yeah. um, Artem Lobov, all these UFC veterans and legends, celebrities, right? I'm a nobody. So they, they weren't going to pay my flight um, or any of my sort of camp or anything to get out there. However, I spoke to some of my sponsors, um, Crypto Against Cancer. Uh, the guys have obviously got a lot of money being crypto boys. Um, they're gonna fund me and pay for me to go out. Is that too loud? No, no, too uh, Pay for me to go out. And um, yeah, so I, I mentioned that to the uh, to Goat Combat and they said, look, if you could get out here in September, we're gonna match you. Dave Feldman, which is the owner of BKFC, will, will, will match you uh, for October 22nd. 
Just gotta get there now, I'm halfway there, get there. And then, yeah, should be fighting, uh, I think it's Miami or Tampa in Florida. Nice. Um, it's amazing, mate, so. Fair play of that, eh? <laughs> that'd be October 22nd, and then, um, yeah, once, I'll go, I think I'll do the same as I did when I first came to Thailand. I'm gonna go there for four to six weeks first on my own with my trainer, Chris. And then I'm sure I'm gonna like it, love it. And then I'll come back and I think early next year I'm gonna to move to Miami. That, that, Are you? I think so. Oh, we I, can't go. We'll, we'll, I'll, we'll be lost without I'll, you. I'll always, <laughs> I'll always come back to Thailand. Obviously really? I've, got, I've got a Thai fiance, so she's got Thai family, yeah. got Thai friends. And, um, so I'll always come back here, but I've been here for so long now, 10 years. I don't know whether it's the COVID because everything's closed and it's not the same or whether it's, I don't know, whether it's the time scale, yeah. but I'm just a bit over Thailand. And obviously if you go to Miami on, a, on arrival, you get vaccination, um, which is done. One, oh, one, one Johnson and Johnson and then everything's open. So I'll go, to, uh, go for four to six weeks. <clears throat> four to six weeks. He's going to come through here, isn't yeah, it? <laughs> Four to six weeks, uh, come back, and I think we're going to move out. Uh, and, and, uh, so my girlfriend, or fiance, no, we're going to fiance, not girlfriend, um, she's still got a work visa. Okay. Uh, she works for an um, aer aerospace company. So um, she's still got a 10-year visa. So she, I was like, babe, nervous to talk to her. I was like, I think we're going to go to Miami. And she's like, yes, I want to have kids next year. And she's like, I can't imagine bringing up a kid in Patty or Thailand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was oh, like, fair play. amazing. So fair I, think, play. I think the next chapter of my life, of uh, the journey is going to be, and obviously, if I'm in Miami, I'm where the money is, and where BKFC is, rather than traveling all the time around the world and stuff. Well, so. if you're in Miami, we're going to have to do a video call, aren't we? Go, we'll yes. find out where it is. Well, listen, my friend, it's been a pleasure. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you so much. Here, buddy. We're going to have to go, because Chris is walking around over there looking at you, and I think if we keep you any longer, <laughs> he's going to work you a bit harder. Um, I will share the link description below where they can watch the, or, or carry the fight, watch yeah, the fight. That's it. So, yeah. so it, it's BK TV app. Uh, it's an app we download, monthly or yearly subscription. And that's got all the bare knuckle fights pretty much around the world. BK all right. TV well, I'll app. drop a link down below so we can connect with TJ, yeah, we'll see how he gets on. Good luck, my friend. I hope you do well. Cheer, brother. I hope I you do so well. Guys, that's it from us today. As, as always, it's been an absolute pleasure, so we will be cheering you on. So, like Team TJ, and afterwards, if you like a few sherbets, I'll tell there you what, you go. easy man, easy man. <laughs> all right, guys, that's it from us here at Venom Training Camp. I'll put a link in the description below if you are interested in coming to do Muay Thai or boxing. Uh, come down, see the trainers here. They're very, very experienced. They'll take care of you. Come and have a rattle with this guy before he sods off. <laughs> and uh, make sure you do it on a Monday, because Saturday and Sunday he'll be on the source. So <laughs> yes. make sure you do it on a Monday. <laughs> All right, that's it from us, guys. As always, please, guys, remember, hit the subscribe button and also the bell icon if you'd like to be notified when we bring out a new video. Check out our members area. More and more members are joining each and every week. And join our Discord group. And I'm going to go, because they're doing some of that in the background. That's it from us, guys. Thank you very much for watching. And please, wherever you are in the world, stay safe. <laughs>